Hi, I'm Michael Surratt. I'm a senior sales engineer at Giga.io. Today, I'd like to take you through an example video that's been done by our colleagues over at Bright Computing. This shows how to use their product, Bright Cluster Manager, in the 9.2 or newer edition to manage resources from Giga.io, specifically our, uh, our resource pooling appliances and our, uh, and our PCI Express switches uh, that we do for memory, memory fabric and memory semantic uh, resource sharing. So let's get started with this. We'll begin by binding resources using the, the command line. And so we're here on the head node, GigIO2, and we're switching over into the cluster manager shell. So we'll check their device status and we see that we've got a couple switches. We have a head node, four other nodes that are currently down. Now, now, uh, now our, our video maker here, he's checking over to see uh, what resources that he has available. So he went into the GUI for our accelerator pooling appliance, now under resource management. Uh, this system is set up where it has two sides, a uh, left and a right, or a drawer one and a drawer two. First drawer has a GPU, a Mellanox card, and another device, and a PCI device. And then we also see we've got a, a K80 GPU on the other side. All right, so we've got some resources here, and now it's time to actually uh, get moving and, and do some things uh, with those resources and allocate those out to the nodes. Remember, the nodes are currently down. I'm just checking the topology. So these switches, the, the PCI Express switches need to have a topology defined so they can know how to perform the communication, what, uh, what things need to be done where. And so we're showing we've got the two nodes, uh, one and two on switch one and node three and four on switch two. And now he's checking the help to see how to go about and binding a PCI resource to a particular node. So we're going to, for node one, we're going to give the left hand or drawer one of the, re, of the accelerator pooling appliance. And then for node three, we're going to get the right hand or drawer two side. And we're applying those bindings right now. So the administrator used the existing topology. It was sufficient for his or her needs. Notice in the, in the uh, CLI, the spacing and color identification make it very easy for you to see which nodes are associated with which downstream resources. You still have all the, all the nodes, the cluster nodes themselves, one, two, three, and four are still down. So uh, our administrator forgot to use the, uh, the command device before power on. So we're powering on all four, four nodes. Uh, just as a side note, powering up nodes two and four is a superfluous step right now. All four nodes are booting. All right, everything's up. We're still in the cluster manager shell. Now we've exited. So now we'll SSH directly into node one and we'll look at the PCI tree in a verbose mode and we'll look to see what does this newly booted host see and uh, we'll have the mouse pointer move over here. And so we see there's the Mellanox adapter, there's the NVIDIA V100 uh, GPU, and then the previously un unidentified uh, device is actually a QLogic InfiniBand adapter. Out of there, let's go to node three and see what node three can see. Same LSPCI command, pipe it to more. Now we're looking for just that K80. And There it is, Tesla K80. Now you see two because a K80 board is actually not a single GPU. It's really two GPUs melded into one PCI adapter. So that's why it can come up as two devices. All right, back into the cluster manager shell. Check the status of the cluster. And now, now the administrator says, okay, I want to power off all the nodes. Notice we have command completion, right? Node one dot dot node four. All right, nodes are coming down. Again, we still leave the active switch topology intact, right? So we're gonna use the existing my fabric and we'll check the bindings. 
or say that we're trying to modify the bindings. Now we show them, okay, in a verbose mode. We want to unbind. Now we want to release these resources from nodes one and two. So release, unbind the left and the right side of the accelerator pooling appliance. And we see that those go back to a gray state, so they're not assigned to any of the nodes. They don't have any of the nodal colors. Now we bind those free resources to nodes two. Yeah, well, I'm gonna go back and edit that. Node two and node node four, right? We've all made errors in the command line, I'm sure. I know I have. Now we apply these changes. So check them first to make sure he's got the colors right. Okay, so node two is the left-hand side and node four gets the right-hand side. We apply them, apply these bindings. All right, they're applied. Now it's time to turn on the nodes. Now, again, like I said before, there's no need really to power on all four of the nodes. It's really the only two that you need to work on in this case would be nodes two and four. Nodes one and three could be left in a power off state. They're not relevant to this particular thing because we've released those resources and they're not involved now. So we're, as before, the previous example, we're gonna SSH into node two and we're gonna go look at its PCI tree. We expect to see three different devices, the Mellanox, the NVIDIA V100, and the QLogic InfiniBand card. So we see all those. And then we'll likewise SSH over into node four to look to see if we see the K80 adapter listed there. There's one and there's, all right, so both sides, both portions, if you will, of the K80 are there, so we see it all, we got it. All the behaviors as expected. The next section will replicate those two examples, but instead of being in a command line environment, we'll be in the bright view GUI. And this is really a, a pleasing GUI uh, in my own personal and professional opinion. So let's look at the devices that we have. Similar to what we had before, we've got four nodes, we've got a head node, GigIO2, then we have the two different PCI Express switches, and we have that resource box. Right, which is a, one of our accelerator pooling appliances. The nodes are down, all the other gear is up. Check things at the cluster level, let's look at the fabrics. So this should look familiar to what we were seeing in the CLI just a few minutes ago. Now we're looking over at the bindings and you'll notice that again, the, the interface as much as possible is, is very similar from command line over to graphics, but so we see nodes one, two, three, and four. We're, and here's the left and right hand sides of that resource system, uh, the pooling appliance. But I think we're about ready to see something a little bit more interesting. Click. So we can drag and drop now. Uh, and that's pretty awesome <laughs> uh, if you're doing something simple like that. Uh, you know, some users really appreciate that. And these are the kinds of changes. The, the, back, the background redfish is there. So he previewed what it is. Let's go ahead and apply the apply those changes. And now we've got it. Notice the same kind of color coding is happening between nodes and the, uh, the bound resources. Time to check to see whether we've got anything. Again, this is superfluous. We, we could just turn on the nodes that we need, nodes one and three, or we're going to go ahead and turn on in all four of the nodes in the cluster. We will need all four of these systems up at the very end, but uh, not right this split second. All right, now let's SSH into node one, do the same thing, else PCI, verbose tree, pipe it to more. We expect to see three things, boom, boom, boom. Mellanox, NVIDIA G, uh, GB100, and the QLogic InfiniBand adapter. Out of there, SSH into three. Let's check the tree out, pipe to more, and we should see the two K80 interfaces, and that's what we see. There's one, and there's the second one. Back over to the Brightview GUI. 
Now for the nodes, we're going to take the nodes off. It's important at this point to point out that depending on your operating system version, um, it is, and if you use advanced mode on our accelerated pooling, pooling appliance and have the ability to use synthetic endpoints and you can and you have hot plug in your operating system, then you can actually make these, some of these changes on the fly. You don't need to turn off and turn on nodes. But this is the more generic case. So now we'll, we unbound really quickly with two clicks, and now we're going to drag and drop. Boom, boom. Here we go. So now we've got node two sees the left-hand side, node four sees the right. We're not going to preview the redfish this time. We'll just apply. Minimize that. Let's head over to now. We've got all four nodes are set up. Pick our action. We're going to go to power, select on, confirm. And now those four nodes will power up. In this case, we only needed to power on nodes two and four. So same pattern, we'll SSH over into node two, LSPCI, check the tree out. And we need to see three things, right? We need to see the Mellanox adapter, we need to see the, the V100, and then we need to see the QLogic InfiniBand. Out of two, back into four, we should see the two K80s. And there we have it, as expected. Next, we're gonna talk about how to set a new switching topology. So we'll go back into the cluster manager shell and let's look at available topologies. First, we'll check the status of the cluster, okay. We're going to look at the fabrics. Let's list the current fabric that we have. All right. Now we're going to be editing my fabric and saying topology. We're going to look at the available, available topologies. There are 18 factory standard topologies available here. Okay. We're using 2S8 by 4-X2. but we don't need that much in the way of hosts and downstream ports. We're using, so we're gonna to switch to 2S 8x4X1. It's something of a trivial example, but now we'll select it by name. And we only have a four node cluster, so this will be fine. The previous uh, topology we were using was somewhat over-specified for this cluster's needs. So we see the details here. We start selecting what we what our switches are going to be, and then we begin to assign uh, port groups to our various hosts. Node one, node two, nodes three and four. Node one and two are on switch one, and three and four are on switch two. And then we're setting our downstream ports. we're assigning those to the left and right side adapters for the accelerator pooling appliance. So let's show, now we see that we've assigned everything. Now let's commit all that. Okay, now we wanna go ahead and apply the topology. So we'll try to force it here. So we've got that, that switch topology, it's named, that's what's active, and now we're gonna power on the four nodes. Check the device status, everything is up. And then we will check the topology and we see that yes, that we've got good connectivity. And we're out of that, let's check the port map. Boom, all the details about rates how many ports and negotiated speed and all that. And we can also use an option to show LED colors. Doesn't quite fit this width of the screen, 
But one thing about our switches is they have multiple colors for each of the ports, and so the, the LEDs can give you a great deal of diagnostic information with a simple glance. Here we configure NTB interfaces. NTB stands for Non-Transparent Bridging. Into the Cluster Manager shell on the head node Giga IO2. No surprise, we've got our switching gear up, but the nodes are down. Now we're saying we want to actually set up a network for internode communication for all four of the nodes. Base address, right? The net masks and so forth. So this is a cluster interconnect that we're setting up that's going to run exclusively over uh, memory semantic PCI expressed switch interface. So now we're going to add an interface to each one of the four nodes and give it a name. So we committed four devices. Now it's time to power on the nodes. We power on nodes one through four. Here's an example. We're trying to set up something for everything all at once. So having all the nodes powered up at the same time, that is a very relevant thing to be doing. We'll SSH to a couple of them just to check to see how it looks. In node one, we look and we say, here's an NTB link that goes to node two. And notice there's another one that goes to four and three. We check again over here on node two, and we see again something that goes to node three, node one, and node four. So they have these interfaces that go to each of the other nodes, right? Nodes one, so node two can see node one, three, and four. Back to the cluster manager command shell. We're gonna check device connectivity. We'll first set up the name of the fabric. And we see that everybody can see everybody. Node, each of the nodes can see themselves and their three cluster mates. All right, again, I'm Michael Surratt, Senior Sales Engineer for GigIO. Thank you very much for your time and attention today as we've gone through how to use uh, Bright Computing's Cluster Manager and Bright View uh, to, to manage GigIO uh, composable infrastructure.